What's up, you guys? Byron Rogers, Executive Protection, Training Day Field Note. I get asked all the time, uh, do I need to have military or law enforcement experience to get into executive protection? And this is something I, I talk and teach in my school, but the answer is no, absolutely not. There are a number of different people at the top of the game who, or, or that have had amazing and tremendous careers who were just straight civilians. Um, to the point where I almost think that there's a, there's a few things uh, that culminate into what I call the civilian advantage. You know, you're Elijah Shaw, you're, you're, you're Christian West. They're, they're like, honestly, there's so many of them that are up there that uh, Jerry Van Dreesen had great careers that did not come from law enforcement or military. It is nice having that background. There are lots of folks from both of those realms inside of what we do. However, it's not mandatory and sometimes um, I think people and agents are better off for not even having those backgrounds. Some people, depending on your personality and the way you orient yourself uh, to the rest of your life after those careers, right? So, you know, as a civilian, you know, a lot of the civilian guys, what I see is they uh, don't rest on their laurels. You know, they come in the industry and it's about what they can do. It's about what they um, have done recently to train for their careers and they take the career extremely seriously as a military guy or as a law enforcement uh you know guy or individual you know I, I can tell you from experience in the military it's like hey 10 minutes ago i was doing stuff with millions of dollars worth of equipment i held lives in my hands you know what i mean like uh life was like literally like going from zero to uh 200 miles an hour at the drop of a hat frequently and constantly or it's fighting for my life like you're thinking about your deployments and all the stuff you're doing you know then you have to come in there's this cognitive dissonance that's like hey man like i'm not a coffee getter or you know uh, i'm not you know you have to make the transition from warlord to guardian and it honestly some guys just don't make it guys that are great that i would i would go to war with um, I can't have on an EP detail because they haven't been able to make the psychological transition from Warlord to Guardian, you know. On the law enforcement side, the same type of thing can happen. You know, you've, you've been doing a lot of uh, police work that has to do with more intensity or uh, uh, more authority or being able to do things with a badge. And then now as, well, even now in law enforcement, but anyways, you know, as a private security professional, you need to be able to do those things just as another citizen, you know? Um, and there's ways of getting that done, but you have some cognitive, maybe you've had a whole entire career, you know, and you retire with a high rank and now you have to learn how to um, just be in this service related industry with none of that, you know? Um, so there's different pitfalls to any background, right? But I find that civilians uh, generally know they need to prove themselves or they come from a frame of mind where they feel like I need to continually prove myself because I'm out here with all these special forces guys and SWAT guys and law enforcement guys, right? Which causes them to organically um, make executive protection more than just a job. It becomes a lifestyle. They have the habits that foster an ongoing student, you know, that ongoing learning process of getting better. I find that that happens very often. And then another thing I think that's great about guys that want to get into the industry from just the civilian market um, is the fact that when you're military or, or law enforcement, you smell like military or law enforcement, you know, like I can't tell you how many times people are like, are you a cop? Are you like, what are you, what are you exactly? You know, like, but when you're a straight civilian, it's kind of funny because it's like, you can, you have that civilian feeling to you. Um, and that can actually work as great camouflage with a lot of principles where they just want to have like the normalist experience uh, associated with their protective team. So, you know, you have this kind of civilian energy that you can bring to the to, to the detail because you're just not dress right dress, you know, straight lines, click pop, you know what I'm saying? You know, click pop, snap, crack, you know what I mean? You're not doing any of that stuff, you know? Um, and uh, that actually can add to the, the feeling um, and comfortability of your uh, to your principals and clients and get you requested. I have seen it get guys requested more frequently in some cases, depending on the principal of the client. So just some thoughts. You don't need to be law enforcement or military. Of course, it, it's a great thing if you are. We, you know, I love working with other Marines and law enforcement folks and stuff like that, but this is just a message out there to the civilian market for people who are thinking about getting in and are like, well, maybe I wouldn't make it. I want you to know that you absolutely you absolutely will make it if you're willing to put in the work and know that executive protection and private security is more than just a job. It really requires a lifestyle if you're gonna be good enough to be as advertised if you're ever checked 
or just to be good at this stuff. This is Byron Rogers. Let's train together. Let's make this the best year of your private security and executive protection career. Uh, train with me at executiveprotectiontrainingday.com. I'll see y'all in the classroom. Out. Boom!